I'm the uh, uh, executive director of Infrequent Seams, and I'm here with uh, multimedia artist uh, Monica Weiss. Uh, and Frequent Seams is proud to focus on this new work by Monica Weiss entitled Metamorphosis Nirbhaya. Metamorphosis Nirbhaya is a five part sound composition accompanied by five silent video pieces. First, the first four movements are based on the artist's acoustic piano improvisations, which she later transformed into digitally manipulated layers of sound and mastered as an ambisonic sound environment. Uh, and the fifth section, which is nearly 12 minutes, includes a work by uh, Weiss for eight vocalists. Monica, I'm excited to be able to uh, present this work in this context today. I'm excited to be here and I'm so happy that you're going to premiere the piece uh, through the Infrequent Seams program. That's exciting. Yeah, it's um, a beautiful, I recall that we showed the first part last uh, summer on the second Infrequent Seams uh, stream fest. And so I'm really excited to now be able to present in its entirety the full work. The piece is going to be part of a presentation in Poland uh, later this year, right? And it's uh, two works uh, that are being uh, presented in tandem because they're inter they're separate works but interrelated, uh, right? Two pieces are going to be permanently installed in a park, in a collection of the sculpture park of the Center of Polish Sculpture, the National Heritage Institution of Poland in, in Orojsko. Actually, the, the sound which will be presented and installed permanently in the park will be built first. It was already supposed to be built in the fall, but a pandemic prevented the installation. And then later this year, the silent sculpture with water and film projection will be built. What we will hear today is the sound that will be permanently there in the park. And you will hear the sound, which is roughly uh, 30 minutes long, only in the mornings and in the evenings. So it will be in the moments of transformation, metamorphosis, you know, from night to day and from day to night. Oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm thinking about, uh, you know, in, in, in our conversations, you mentioned how the role of myth is significant. And uh, I thought... Uh, it'd be good to hear you explain a little bit more about the role that this plays in narrative of this work as it's presented over the over these five movements. The main inspiration for this cycle of sound uh, and video pieces is the story of nymph Daphne, specifically the moment in which her skin begins to harden into a tree bark and her voice disappears and morphs into the voice of the trees and the wind. Daphne escapes violence by changing her body into a tree. There is, of course, a, a beauty implied in that transformation from one living form to another, but there is also a tragedy or trauma implied of this impending violence. In the films, what you see is a symbolic representation of the transformation, which I represent by the um, choreographed movement of the performer and juxtaposed with my drawings. The other half of this uh, two, this dual work, uh, uh, Metamorphosis Nirbhaya, is um, an installation. Nirbhaya is both the title of the, uh, it's the title is in the video work, but it is also the title of the sculpture, turns the India Gate uh, 90 degrees and makes a full full circle out of the, I don't know, I mean, I it's pretty spectacular um, and we should probably in this moment uh, share a, qu a quick image of the, yes. of the of the work and so uh, that's a wonderful moment to think, to see this work mm -hmm. and uh, can you talk a little bit about the work and uh, how it's, how the two works are related? The image inside of the water is meant to evoke a gesture of lament. 
The figure that we see in the side of the water is actually uh, a woman composed of many women who is transforming into a tree. Can you speak also a little bit about the movement performers that you worked with in this piece? Most of the performers that I've worked with for this piece came here to my Brooklyn studio and I would uh, invite them to perform uh, gestures that are very slow, silent gestures of lamentation and I would choreograph every kind of minute or every second. I wouldn't know exactly what might happen with every gesture, but uh, we would try again and again until it worked. It's a very minimal movement, you can see it in the films. Basically nothing happens, but everything happens at the same time. <laughs> yes, this is one of my, uh, one of the things I really value about um, abstraction in general, I guess, but um, when meaning is not made explicit, it, it is, it, it calls on the, on who, who is experiencing the work to um, make those associations themselves. And uh, the works, you know, inevitably offer some, uh, I don't know, um, some hints maybe. Uh, but, um, you know, in the process of finding, of, of creating meaning for for one person's own experience, they're taking a very active role in experiencing the work. And you know, I, I think it's almost on some level collaborative. And uh, that's kind of also a thing I think that is interesting about a lot of the work. I mean, the role of collaboration seems mm -hmm. uh, important in how you work with the movement performers and also in other aspects of your work too, I believe, yes? And, you know, the same happened with the vocalists. I would guide my, my performers into like a zone of almost improvisation, you know, when something worked or a higher pitch work, then we would go into that, you know, into that sort of moment. You know, when I work with piano, um, I then use it as a raw material, but um, I almost feel that I collaborate with the moment, <laughs> not just with people, but you know, like the moment in space and time tells me something. and so. It's both uh, very carefully planned and it's also completely uh, open to um, like a beautiful contingency that may occur you know, in, a, in a moment. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you mentioned this, uh, the significance of the moment in space and time. It, it uh, calls to mind this amazing scholarship about your work in this new um, monograph that's uh, out or coming out, right? In October, and um, it's it's beautiful. It has an amazing text uh, about my work. So I'm really grateful uh, for the um, Center of Polish Sculpture. And, uh, so I want to read this, this this quote here. About a year ago, I, I came on the came on to the title uh, "Continuous Presence" as a, a name that I wanted to give to journal or zine or something in between that I wanted to. Create, which the first issue of Continuous Presence, which is a, a wonderful 60 page uh, collection of different you know, essays and artwork and scores and things, came out earlier in, in September. And this term showing up in, in the, I think, the first essay in the monograph, right? By the great esteemed art historian Griselda Pollock, wrote this amazing meditation on my, my process, my work in the context of lament, history of, of art, of course, as well. So yeah, I, I want to read this quote here, um, it, it's, it's beautiful. Um, I am arguing that her work, her artwork, uh, Monica's work, is a rhetoric she has created for a continuous presence that is realized in a formalized, aesthetically intense, audiovisual musicality, even as its chosen terms are body, sound, gesture and movement, avoids all melodrama in its gestural form, refutes all hystericization of the body, and does not silence language. Hence, it does not still thought. That's just, I mean, I, I just found that so beautiful. Uh, I made an effort in the first issue to explain what I thought continuous present means, and to then uh, now have this really beautiful vision, uh, you know, interpretation of that same 
term in connection to analyzing your work is a really special uh, and such beautiful language too, as you said. <laughs> so, well, let's, um, uh, without further ado, let's uh, see uh, the, the work, uh, uh, Metamorphosis Nirbhaya 